Greetings everyone, this is Kittens and welcome to my channel. So, it is a new big project for me, but now I'll be making and uploading videos on how to deliver the best localization management. On my channel recently, I've been creating a handful of YouTube videos about cycling in Ireland. Then it hit me, why not try to make a video of my work tips before I had no equipment and know how to how to deliver the video but now I have I'm thinking of making each video about 10 to 15 minutes long then it would be about 40 to 50 videos to cover the whole topic that I want to share with you and the topic will be mostly on smart localization management but it will also help you if you are not a manager, such as a translator or reviewer. You know, we are not living in a perfect world per se. And more than often, as a translator, you also need to do the man management jobs. So without further ado, let's get started. Now it's about working smarter and better with Xlif. And let me briefly introduce myself. Uh, I'm working as a full-time translator for eight years and won some best localization awards and I exp expertise in cattle management and currently I'm working more as a linguistic engineer than translator and I devise AI tools for Xlif. So what is Xlif thing? Xlif is a localization industry standard file format developed by an organization called Oasis. Uh, in fact, every translator in the world is using this format. You just don't realize because it's hidden from your view. Then why do we need this thing called Xlif? So, as a translator or a translation manager, the client, when they send you a file, it comes in various file formats, such as Word, Excel, PDF, UI interface, Photoshop, Illustrator, Subtitle, you can name it. The thing is, it causes a huge amount of clutter and skeleton. Skeleton is a thing that as a translator, the information that you, you don't need as a translator. It can include the size of the picture, hard, in, hard embedded codings, and so on. So in, in the IT world, when you are exchanging files, it's either JSON or XML. Usually, the, these two are the most common ones that are being used. And Xlib is same as XML, just a little bit of variation. So, localization industry saw this, did, adopted Xlif, and now uses this file format vastly in its tasks. But the thing is, you have to be a programmer to use Xlif properly. But if you're, what if, if you're not a programmer? Then here comes Cattle. The answer is Cattle. So, Cattle which stands for Computer Assisted Translation Tool, has import options and filters so that you can use Xlif even though you're not a programmer. But there's a trap here. Cat tool always have manager account and translator reviewer account separated, and these option filter setup must be prepared by the manager account. So if you're working for a dedicated localization company, this is not an issue. You will never see the screen of these setups and filters. When you log into your kettle, all your task, translation memory, term base will be pre-assorted and properly presented to you. However, the issue kicks in if you are not working for a professional localization company, for example, pharmaceutical, social engineering, movie industry, aviation, construction, you name it. Because though these companies' main job is not localization, they don't know how to use cattle. 
then it's totally up to you, the translator, to come up with your own means of converting files into XLI format. So even though if you only have a translator account, depending on the accessibility, you might your account might have access to these filters and options. Then you can set it up by yourself. Then what's the problem here? It's about speed and convenience, which also is very heavily related to consistency of your job and the quality. In the professional local Asian company, everything that the translator needs to do is translation. But in the non-professional local education company, translators must go through extra steps every time they do translation. Let's compare these processes. In the professional local education company, it's just one step. Translation. That's it. Done. In the non-professional local education company, it's these steps you must go through every time when there is a task. Let's say usually you get the task from your client via email. Then you have to open your email, download the attachment, apply filter, import file, translate, export file, attach email, and then send it back to the client. At a glance, this is not a real deal breaker. But when the tasks pile up alongside with clumsy file management, this can require more of your time than the actual translation itself. Believe me, this happened to me every time before I came up with Xleaf. So there are two options here. First, you can ditch cattle and go back to the prehistoric translation environment or devise own solution to bridge the gap between the cattle and the real world translation. So that's Xleaf. So that was the introduction, and to get it rolling, what knowledge you think you need here? So in the video, upcoming videos, I will take an example of Excel to Xleaf conversion, because it's the most common format you come across as, as, as a translator. So first, you need to choose a programming language to communicate with Excel like C++, Python, Java, Java, AutoHockey, etc. And in my examples, I'll be using AutoHockey because it is so easy, same as Python, and the speed is really slow, which is also, it, it's still a little bit faster than Python, but it's much slower than C++. For me, like the person who has zero knowledge and background about programming, AutoHockey is one of the best options out in the market to easily access the programming codes. So in my example, I'll be using AutoHockey. And next, you first need to knock on the Excel store. It's not the UI that's been presented to you. You have to knock on the Excel's back door and see the Excel's code itself. In, in my case, I'll be using ComObject. It's either ComObjectGet or ComObjectCreate. Sometimes get is better, sometimes create is better, better. So I'll use them accordingly. Third, loop and manipulation. These are done predominantly by SafeArray and Legex. And finally, you prepare an empty Xlib file and populate it with SafeArray. So what are the benefits? So you can get rid of all skeletons, which I said before is a long localization portion of the document. And you don't need to set up filters every time when you are importing the document. You can also fix the client's, client's mistake in the source text. And you can apply PH Legex tagger, which comes incredibly handy when you're doing placeholder translations. Cat tools also have their own Legex tagging system. But if you know how to hard code Legex tagger into your system, it is much better and more convenient. And then, of course, you can skip tedious mouse and keyboard clicks, keyboard clicks with just one simple drag and drop. And lastly, you can, you can improve consistency of your translation through XLIF 
TM Sync. That, that was the first introduction to the videos that I'll be making in the future. And I'm thinking of uploading it pretty much weekly. Please stay in tune, then my next video will be how to install AutoHockey and the AutoHockey editor, which is a HK Studio, which has which I've been using for past like a year and a half. It's an amazing editing tool. So thanks for watching and see you in the next video.